us. That's right. Taken from Proverbs 27 and 17 that declares that iron sharpened iron, so does the man sharpen it, the countenance of his friends. And so we believe that God is going to speak to us tonight. As we go into the word, I need you to get on the phone, need to text somebody, call somebody, email them. Let's move quickly so we can make the most of these moments that we have in the word of God tonight. Phone tree, I need you to move quickly and call those, text those that you might alert them and make them aware that, hey, Sharp Points is on the air and we're here to fortify you to renew you, to strengthen you, and to help you grow into that woman of God or that man of God that God has already predestined you to be. Happy birthday to all of you February people. That's right. We are in the month of February. Can you believe it? We are in February 2024. January is over and done, and we're in February. Today is the first day of February. And we know that February has a lot of things going on. Of course, Black History Month. Of course, you have Valentine's Day. And of course, you have Pastor Reese and I celebrating 40 years of marriage on February the 4th. That's right. February the 4th, which is this upcoming Sunday, we'll be celebrating 40 years of marriage. And so we ask that you continue to pray for us, that we will continue to move forward in it. And we ask that you will continually, amen, support us in the way that, you know, will help us finish the assignment. Because as far as Pastor Reese and I are concerned, it's all about the kingdom of God and the assignment which God has put us together to do and to make happen that we might be blessed and that others might be blessed as well. Shout out to my grand uh, children, Tayden, Kaysen and Adalyn, as well as my lovely daughter, Van Nika. All right. Now this month, each and every month, tomorrow we always. Oh, that's right. Tomorrow is Elder Marvin, Marvin White's birthday. Happy birthday, Elder Marvin White. We celebrate you on February the 2nd. It will be his birthday, and he's a great man of God, and we appreciate him, uh, as well as others who may have a birthday this month. Uh, we'll be celebrating you as well. Now, let me uh, give you the scripture that we'll be dealing with this month. You know, each and every month, God has given us a scripture for us to look at and meditate on at before we go to bed at night and when we get up in the morning. And for the month of January, of course, we had one from the book of Isaiah. But for the month of February, I want to give you what is the February scripture so you can meditate on the word. Remember, we need to meditate in the word when day and night. So this month of February We're looking at Deuteronomy chapter 7 and verse 9. Deuteronomy chapter 7 and verse 9 is the scripture that we're going to meditate on when we get up in the morning and before we go to bed at night. It says, know therefore that the Lord thy God, he is God. Isn't that good? Know that the Lord thy God, he is God, the faithful God, which keep it covenant and mercy with them that love him and keep his commandments to a thousand generations. Wow, that is great to know that God is the God who is faithful and that God is our God and that he's the God who keep it covenant and mercy. And of course, we declared unto you that 2024 is a year in which God wants us to make progress through and by the covenant that we have been given a covenant. We are a covenant people. We have a covenant mindset because God made a covenant with Abraham, the father of faith. That covenant was a covenant of circumcision, which was a circumcision in the flesh. But you and I now have a circumcision of the heart and God is in covenant promised to bless Abraham and his seed, not seed as a many, but seed as a one, 
pointing to Jesus Christ. And the Bible said in Galatians 3.29, if you be Christ, then are you Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. So God is a God who wants us to be covenant minded this year. And as we begin to be covenant minded, we're going to make supernatural progress. We're going to see the good hand of God even the more. So that's what we've been teaching about this year. But right now, tonight, we're asking those of you that are able, we're going to have a word of prayer. Shout out to Vincent Bellamy, Curtis Bryant, amen, uh, Brianna, uh, as well as Sister Rachel, Mother Whitaker, and uh, Brother Brandon, all of you great people of God, Mother Doris. Let's get ready to pray now and let God speak. Father, thank you for your goodness, your mercy, your love. Thank you that you will think through my mind, speak through my lips, a relevant word in Jesus name. Amen and amen. All right. Now, don't forget. We're asking that you will open your heart. Remember, Thursday night is a special night. Hit the like button, hit the share button, hit the thumbs up button. Amen. And uh, share, this word. share this word with other people. Amen. And as you come on tonight, amen, you need to declare that there is no fear in my life. There is no fear in my life. Why? Because I'm in covenant with God. And because I'm in covenant with God, I don't have to fear what man can do unto me. I can trust God's word to be performed in my life. Hallelujah. Now, those of you that have your Bibles, we're looking at a teaching part two of this teaching entitled Zaphnatha Pania. And as a subtitle, Treasury of the Glorious Rest. Zaphnathpa, and Treasury of the Glorious Rest. We're looking at this from the book of Genesis 41 because that's what Pharaoh called Joseph. He called him the treasury of his glorious rest. In other words, this man, Pharaoh, commits everything to the charge of Joseph. Joseph is a shadow and a picture of Jesus Christ. All things that the father had has been submitted unto Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ has submitted these things unto his church that we might be a place of his glorious rest that God has deposited and is going to continue to deposit things into us or unto us that we might bless others and be that blessing that the Abrahamic covenant declared we are to be. We are called to be blessed, to be a blessing. So God has to make us a place of his glorious rest, a treasury. Now let's get into it. All right, let's go to Genesis 41, 39 through 46. And I got to read quickly because uh, I don't have but so much time. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, for as much as God has showed thee all this, there is none so discreet and wise as thou art. Thou shalt be over, over my house, and according unto thy word shall all my people be ruled. Only in the throne will I be greater than thou. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, See, I have set thee over all the land of Egypt. Wow. Look at all that authority. Look at all that responsibility. Look at all the, co the control and the things that God is submitting. I mean, that Pharaoh is given to Joseph to watch over, to steward over. And Pharaoh took off his ring from his hand, took off his ring, took off his ring, symbolic of his authority, and put it on, upon Joseph's hand and arrayed him in vestures of fine linen and put a gold chain about his neck. And he made him to ride in the second chariot, which he had. And they cried before him, bow the knee. And he made him ruler over all the land of Egypt. Pharaoh said unto Joseph, I am Pharaoh. <clears throat> and without thee, without you, Joseph, no man 
lift up his hand or foot in all the land of Egypt. And Pharaoh called Joseph's name Zaphnath Pahnea, and he gave him to wife Asnath, the daughter of Potiphar, priest of On. And Joseph went out over all the land of Egypt. And Joseph was 30 years old when he stood before Pharaoh, king of Egypt. And Joseph went out from the presence of Pharaoh and went throughout all the land of Egypt. Now, Joseph, we know the story. His brothers, jealous of him, betray him, put him in a pit, leave him for dead. God allows him to get out. Of course, we know the story of how he was put in jail because it, uh, the man's wife accused him of rape and all of that. Joseph interprets dreams and tells the butler that he's going to get his position back, tells the butler to remember him. But of course, the butler forgets him and all that. Finally, uh, the king has a dream and there's nobody to interpret the dream except Joseph. Joseph interprets the dream and Pharaoh is telling Joseph there's nobody that we should put over this that's wiser, that's more discreet than you. So Joseph is put in position. Remember, Joseph had a dream that one day his father and his brothers would make obeisance to him. So now God is fulfilling the thing that God said to Joseph. And Joseph is put in this position and Pharaoh calls him Zaphnath Panea. And it means a treasury of his glorious rest. And we said to you last time, a treasury is a place where the funds of the government of a corporation or the like are deposited, kept and dispersed. Let me say it again. A treasury is the place where the funds of the government of a corporation or the like are deposited, kept, and dispersed. So this is what the man called Joseph. You're the treasury of my, or of the glorious rest. And that's what God wants us to be. Remember, even Judas, he was the one that's watching over the what? The treasury. In other words, where the funds were deposited, where things were deposited as it related to Jesus Christ. Yet for 30 pieces of silver, he betrayed Jesus. Now, we know that Jesus began his ministry at age 30. Notice in verse 44, Joseph was 30 years old. So Joseph is beginning to be that place, that person where the nation of Egypt, as well as the nation of Israel, are going to have to depend on him to disperse stuff right and properly and to be that blessing because for several years it was going to be good. And then after that, there was going to come several years of famine. And Joseph had the whole nation prepared to go through the famine without death, to be rescued and be delivered without death. Thank God for that. Now, God, as I said to you last time, wants us to be his bank. What I said, God wants us to be his bank, not our own bank, but his bank. He wants us to be used for his glory. He wants to use us for his glory. One way that will happen is even through technology, especially the cell phone. Notice even now, people can cash out you money by a phone. There are many ways to, to receive finances through a phone. So it's like God has positioned us to be a bank for his glory. And God wants to bless you, sir, and bless you, ma'am, because he is a good God and wants us to be people who are positioned to help others. One man of God said that your cell phone is your cash register. 
<laughs> Think about that. Now, again, God wants us to be a place of rest. That means he's going to deposit spiritual stuff in us. And he also wants to deposit natural things to us. Now, you got to understand that there are a lot of Christians and even there are a lot of people who are not a part of the church at all, who don't mind the church getting spiritual things. And that's what always is to be first. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added. Now, notice, though, he says, seek ye first. He didn't say seek ye only. So God is telling us when we prioritize spiritual things, then natural things are coming. So he's going to make us a place where the government, that which he owns, that which he has as God, because the Bible said in Psalm 24 that the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. So God owns it all. Remember what Paul told us in the book of Corinthians? He said, all things are yours, whether they be Cephas or whether they're Paul, all of it are yours. So we understand that God is the owner, but he is a God who wants to make us a bank, a place where he's depositing his wealth, a place where he's depositing not only spiritual things, but also natural things. God made Abraham rich in cattle. That's not spiritual. Rich in uh, silver. That's not spiritual. That's natural. And rich in gold. That's also natural. So God is a God who wants us to be blessed with the spiritual, but also with the natural. Now watch this. Look at Matthew 11, 28 and 29. It says, come unto me, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you what? Rest. One of the main things that God ought to see his church walking in and the world needs to see his church walking in is rest. Rest. What am I mean? Not in activeness, but doing things with peace of mind, doing things undisturbed, doing things without causing confusion, doing things without sowing discord among brethren, doing things in a peaceful and pleasant way that people might see that there's a man who's not worried. There's a woman who's not worried because we've been told by Jesus, let not your heart be troubled. So we are not troubled. We're not full of anxiety. We are people at rest. Notice he said, come unto me, all you that labor and heavy laden, I will give you rest. This rest is not physical for your body. Watch what he tells you. He said, take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest unto your souls, to your will, your mind, your emotions, your, your, your thinking. In other words, God said, you won't be a person walking around wanting to blow your brains out. You won't be a person walking around in a state of delusion or in a state of confusion or in a state of anxiety. You're going to be walking around with shalom, shalom, complete peace, complete wholeness, complete wellness, wellness in your mind, as well as prosperity in your life. Because remember Third John verse two declares that we prosper even as our soul prosper. So we do this by walking by faith, faith in what faith in God, faith in the word of God, faith in the promises of God. Look at Hebrews three, 18 and 19. It says to whom swear he that they should not enter into his rest but to them that believe not. So we see 
that they could not enter in because of unbelief. Moses brought them out of Egypt. They were to go from Egypt to the wilderness into the promised land. The promised land was the place of their rest. They never was able to go into their rest because of unbelief. Unbelief kept them out of the promised land. Joshua and Caleb were of another spirit and those who were under 20 years old went into the promised land. They entered into the rest. You and I are to enter in the promises of God through our faith in Jesus Christ. We are to enter in this rest because we know that all the promises of God in him are yea and in him, amen. We are to enter into this rest by faith. The just shall live by faith. What is faith? Faith is believing what God said and standing on what God said. Faith is calling those things would be not as though they were. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Hallelujah. Faith is believing what God speak, uh, speaks. The Bible said, according to that which is spoken, so shall thy seed be. Abraham believed God. It was accounted to him for righteousness. So we enter into this rest because we believe the spoken word. When you believe the preacher, believe the word of God, because faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the word of God. How can they hear? Except there be a preacher, how can he preach? Except they be sent. So we are sent speaking the word to you so you can mix it with faith and enter into the rest that God wants you to enter into. Hallelujah. All right, now, look at 2 Corinthians 4. And seven, Second Corinthians four and verse number seven says, but we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. We have this treasure. What are we talking about? Treasury of the glorious rest. Treasury of thy glorious rest. That's what we're talking about. Treasury of the glorious rest. Zaph Nath Pania. Zaph Nath Pania. All right, now watch this. The word treasure that's used here in this verse is the Greek masculine noun thesaurus. Thesaurus, which means a deposit, a storehouse, or repository. It means the place in which good and precious things are collected and laid up. Notice we have this treasure, the Holy Ghost, in what? Earthen vessel. What do we have? This treasure. God gave us the Holy Spirit. He gave us <laughs> that which is full of good and precious things, the Holy Ghost. Everything that we need is in the Holy Ghost. The kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness, peace and joy. Where? In the Holy Ghost. So it means the place in which good and precious things are collected and laid up. It means a casket or a coffer or other receptacle in which valuables are kept. God was using this man, Pharaoh, to say that, hey, Joseph, I'm I want you to be my treasury. I want you to be the place where everything valuable that pertains to my kingdom is going to be in your hands. Wow, that's trust. And God is the God who wants us to know that he wants to use us that same way to put it into our hands, to put it under our care, to make us this bank that is necessary to have what is needed to be a blessing to others and to help bring deliverance to people who are worried about 
How they going to make it? How they going to go through? We're going to have a word. We're going to have a revelation. We're going to have the anointing. And we're also going to have the finances to help people out. This is the will of God. Watch this. Look at Genesis 24 and 1. Genesis 24 and 1. And Abraham was old and well stricken in age. And the Lord had blessed Abraham in all things. What did God do for Abraham? Blessed him in all things. In other words, Abraham was what? Set up to be a blessing. Abraham was what? A treasury of God's glorious rest. You don't find nowhere in the scriptures where Joseph is worried about money, finances, or nothing like that. Why? He was a treasury. Abraham wasn't worried about that. So what is going on today when the body of Christ is being lied to, basically, by people who want us to have the spiritual but don't want us to have the natural? Or there are some people who want us to have the natural and don't want us to have the spiritual. Both have been deposited because when God gave us the Holy Spirit, that's the greater one. That's the one who's making sure that we get and receive everything that we need. We have this treasure in earthen vessel that the ecstasy of the power may be of God and not of us. So you have the treasure in you. You have the greater one in you. You got the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. But a lot of people got the Holy Spirit. But then they won't let God make deposits into them financially. They don't know that God wants to trust us through and by tithing and offering giving. That is how the trust is continually built. And then God deposits more and more and more and more. If you want more in 24, you're going to have to prove that, hey, I can be trusted. Joseph proved that he was the man. And then Pharaoh released everything to him. Watch it. Watch it now. Go to Deuteronomy chapter 28, verses 11 and 12. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verses 11 and 12 in the Amplified Classic. I'm going to read it to you in the ERV and the Message Bible. It says, and the Lord shall make you have a surplus of prosperity. Through the fruit of your body, of your livestock, of your ground, in the land which the Lord swore to your fathers to give you. Look at verse 12. The Lord shall open to you his good treasury. That ain't Van Sharp. That's the word. Look what it says. The Lord shall open to you his good treasury. The heavens to give the rain for Rain of the land in its season and to bless all the work of your hands. And then what going to happen? And you shall lend to many nations, but you shall not borrow. That's what God would happen for his church. But we keep letting the world make us think something is wrong with having money or make us think something is evil about being blessed financially. And that's how that deceiver called the devil wins. We got to tell the devil what? Get thee behind me, Satan. We got to let that devil know that God wants us to be his treasury of his glorious rest. He wants us to walk in a peace. And a lot of people, that's what a lot of people are disturbed about. What they're going to eat, what they're going to wear, what they're going to put on. Jesus said, all these things the Gentiles see. No, but that's what they're worried about. But Jesus said, wait a minute, you're more valuable than the lilies. You're more valuable than the sparrow. And if I take care of the little lilies, I take care of the sparrow. I'm going to take care of you, O ye of little faith. What's the problem? Their faith. Got to have faith that God wants you to be set up as a bank. God wants you to be set up as a person that can bless other people. 
When people want money, where do they go? When people want finances, where do they turn? They go to the bank. And a lot of times they go get that loan from the bank and the bank, think about it. What are they doing with your money? Giving you very little interest on it, but then charge you a whole lot of interest on what you borrow. On what you got in the bank, give you very little interest on it. But if you borrow money from the bank, they put a whole lot of interest on you. But God want to use us. He said you can lend to many nations and not borrow. In other words, you can be a blessing to somebody. Amen. Because I'm setting you up. Glory to God. Hallelujah. The other day I was I was preaching our ministry and we written 13 powerful books, 13 powerful books. And uh, I got through ministry. I, 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 the Lord spoke to me after I got through ministering to bless somebody that came to the church with one of our books. Now, these books, this right here, the women's book cost twelve dollars, but all our books are already paid for. So when people buy our books, they're not you know, our books are already paid for. So. After a service, another person came up to me and uh, they wanted one of the books also. Well, what did I do? I, I blessed them. Why? Because that's what it's all about. Well, I couldn't do that if I won't bless. Now, that don't mean I'm going to give all my books away free. No, don't, don't, don't take that wrong. What I'm saying is God has to bless me so I can be a blessing. And I can't tell you how many books we have given away. But God always comes back and bless us with more. Somebody a buy a book that only costs twelve dollars and they'll give me fifty dollars or thirty dollars. It always comes back because the Bible is true in Luke six thirty eight. Give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, shall men give to your bosom. So God wants you and I to know this. Look at Deuteronomy 28 and 12 in the ERV, in the ERV. The ERV says the Lord will open his treasure where he keeps his rich blessings. He will send rain at the right time for your land. He will bless everything you do. Good grace somebody. See, that's an expectation according to Psalms 1. If we meditate in the word, day and night, whatever we do will prosper. God wants to bless everything we do. Come on, type that in. God is going to bless everything I do. God is going to what? Bless everything I do. Why? Because this is the time in which God is establishing this covenant that he made with Abraham and we're covenant minded. And part of the covenant blessing was I will bless you and make you a blessing. He told Abraham in you or in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. Hallelujah. So he said he will bless everything you do. Watch this. You will have money. Notice what he said. You ain't going to just have peace and joy and speak in tongues. You will have money. To lend to many nations and you will not need to borrow anything from them. Hallelujah. Isn't that powerful? Yes. Do you believe it can happen in your life? Absolutely. Do you believe it's for you? Absolutely. It is for you. He wants to make you his bank. He wants to, he wants to make you a place that, again, think about it. One of the things now that the enemy is trying to attack and steal from, they ain't trying to steal from people's bank now, a bank account, trying to, trying to come in and steal from uh, Cash App, uh, Vinco, all these ways, uh, Zelle, all this ain't nothing but the devil because people are recognizing that God is making them a bank, that God is making them a treasury of glorious rest. All right, watch this Deuteronomy 28 verses 11 through 14 in the Message Bible. Let me read in the Message Bible. It said this, God will lavish you. I'm talking to you, sir. I'm talking to you, ma'am. God will lavish you 
with all, I mean, with good things, children from your womb, offspring from your animals and crops for your land, the land that God promised your ancestors that he would he would give you. God, watch this, will throw open the doors of his sky vaults. Man, wow. could great somebody. God got heaven ready to be open for us. That's why he said, bring the tithes and offerings to the store. There may be meat in my house. If I will not open unto you the windows of heaven, I open up the sky vaults of heaven and pour rain on your land on schedule and bless the work you take in hand. You will lend to many nations, but you yourself won't have to take out a loan. Hallelujah. He'll bless you to pay cash. I'm telling you what God can do. I'm a living witness of it. Oh, my God. God will make you the head, not the tail. You will always be the top dog, never the underdog. As you obediently listen to and diligently keep the commands of God, your God, that I am commanding you today, don't swerve an inch to the right or left from the words that I command you today by going off, following and worshiping other gods. That's why people think that you tell them don't go out there to the club and all stuff. You trying to tell them don't get swerved. Don't go off to the left. Don't go off to the right. Don't listen to that other kind of music. So much is at stake for you. God wants to bless somebody he can trust with this. And God wants to trust you, ma'am. He wants to trust you, sir. He wants to use you as a bank. Think about it. How you take money from your check and you trust these people. You don't go to the, that bank, be it PNC, be it Truist, be it uh, another uh, Wells Fargo. You don't go there and say, wait a minute, wait a minute. Are you saved? Do you speak in tongues? No. You're going by what? A record of them not stealing. Therefore, you go there, putting your money there confidently. And you mean to tell me that God don't want somebody to put something on your cell phone, on your cash app, to hear ching ching money coming your way. When you get, think about it, what you do now when you meet people. You say, look, my cash app is this. And a lot of people got cash app now. I told you it's a bank. And they send money to you or you send money to them. Bang. Instantly, boom, right there, $50, $100, $1,000, whatever. Amen? Watch this now. I got to read these last. Uh, I won't be able to finish this. Uh, I won't be able to finish. Uh, let me read uh, 1 Timothy. First, uh, no, uh, yeah, 1 Timothy chapter 6. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verses 17 through 19 in the Message Bible. Amen? It says, tell those rich in this world's wealth to quit being so full of themselves and so obsessed with money. So we who have money or those who have money should never be obsessed with their money, should never put their trust in their money. Our trust is where? In the living God who gives us richly all things to enjoy. Our trust is not going to be in the money. Our trust is going to be in God who gave it to us for it is he that giveth thee power to get wealth that he may establish his covenant, which he swore unto Abraham or unto the, our fathers. Now watch this, which is here today. Money is here today. Go on tomorrow. Tell them to go after God. See, God wants to still keep going after him. Why? Because everything belongs to him. It's all his. <laughs> Who piles on. Oh, my goodness. You see that? Who piles on. All the riches we could ever manage. How? He gives us all the riches we could ever manage. God will give you so much. You'll be like, wow, my God, I got, I got to manage this. Amen. I'm not trying to, 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 to be worried about uh, 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 paying a bill. 
He, he making ends meet. That ain't what I'm living for now. Now I'm just trying to make sure I manage it properly because there's so much. It's overflow. Watch this. To do good. That's what he wants us to do. To be rich in helping others. To be extravagantly generous. If they do that, if they do that, listen at the word, y'all. Listen at the word. He said, if they do that, they'll build a treasury that will last, gaining life that is truly life. In other words, as we operate as a treasury, we build a treasury in heaven. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So God sets us up here on planet Earth. As a treasury to function and do good to other people like Joseph was when people needed some, they came to Joseph. Hallelujah. When people wanted something, they came to Joseph. Joseph took what was under his authority. That was really under Pharaoh's authority. Like Jesus, the head of the church. Is under God. The Bible said the head of every man, woman is the man. The head of every man is Christ and the head of Christ is God. I'm talking Bible to you tonight. So we understand that Joseph was the one that was dispersing it out, giving it out, being generous. Why do you think his brothers came down there? They needed help. And then Joseph sent for his dad and revealed himself to his brothers and said, wait a minute, y'all meant it for evil, but God meant it for some good. And I'm telling you, there are a lot of people that don't even know that what evil they're trying against you, it ain't going to work. It's just setting, setting you up for a bigger, a greater financial blessing. You getting ready to be blessed and the devil won't be able to do nothing but look and cry. Did you hear what I said? Look and cry. The same way he tried to make you cry. Glory to God. Make you give up. He's going to be sitting there looking. Hallelujah. And crying because he see how blessed you really are. Think about how he couldn't do nothing about Joseph. He couldn't, the devil was wanting to do all this against Joseph. It didn't mess Joseph's mind up. It didn't mess Joseph's heart up. Because Joseph had the favor. Joseph had the favor of God on him like you and I got on us. We have the favor of God on us. And we are going to be set up to be a blessing to other people. Look at this in the Passion Translation. I got to quit. Amen. My wife just want me to keep going. It's so good to her. Amen. Somebody need this tonight. Somebody need to know that God is setting you up as a bank. Come on. I'm type that in real quick. I am God's bank. I am God's bank. You notice I didn't say he sent you up as your own bank. He sent you up as his bank. He going to use you for his glory to be right there to help somebody get over the hump. To help somebody, help, hallelujah, stop worrying about a bill. To help somebody stop being upset about that situation. Watch it now. In the Passion Translation, 1 Timothy 6, 17 through 19 says, to all, who, to all the rich of this world, I command you, not to be wrapped in thoughts of pride over your prosperity or rely on your wealth. So we don't rely on our wealth. Our, our trust is in God. No matter how much money we have, we trust in the Lord. He said, for your riches are unreliable and nothing compared to the living God. I like that. Our riches are unreliable and they are nothing compared to God because God the one that gave it to you. And if you trust in God, the one who gave it to you, he's going to keep right on giving it to you because you're showing him, God, you can trust me. 
When you give me money and you bless me with money, I, the first thing I'm going to do is honor you. I'm going to tithe. First thing I'm going to do, I'm going to make sure that I be a blessing to the local church, that I be a blessing to others, that I be a person that will be able to be used as a treasury of the glorious rest. Watch this now. It says, trust instead in the one, not in the money, but in the one who lavishes you, who lavishly, I mean, who lavish, lavishes upon us all good things, fulfilling our every need. Wow. Remind the wealthy to be rich in remarkable works of extravagant generosity, willing to share with others. These spiritual investments will provide a beautiful foundation for their lives and secure for them a great future as they lay their hands upon the meaning of true life. What's the real meaning of life? Loving others, helping others, supporting others. That's when you really get fulfilled. That's why the two greatest commandments are love the Lord thy God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. Love. And that is what makes you willing to share and give and be a blessing. Now, some people ain't going to appreciate it. Some people going to walk away, snub you, act like you ain't never done nothing for them. They're going to talk about you like a dog, but that don't mean nothing. You still did right. You still are in line with God and God going to bless you with more and more and more. He's going to give you what? The uh, increase. Because this is a covenant of increase. God made covenant with Abraham. It was a covenant of increase. The Bible said in Psalms 115, the Lord shall increase you more and more. You and your children. You are on your way to increase. All right. Let me read this to you in the Living Bible. I won't be able to read all this, this stuff to you that I got in these different translations, but let me read the Living Bible and I guess I'll just have to stop tonight. No, I got enough time to finish this on up. I can finish this on up tonight. Thank you, Pastor Reese. All right, let me read this to you in the Living Bible. It says, uh, did I read Living Bible? Yeah, yeah, Living, Living Bible now. Tell those who are rich not to be proud, not to trust in their money, which will soon be gone. But their pride and trust should be in the living God who always richly gives us all we need for our enjoyment. Tell them to use their money to do good. See, you can ready to get your hands on some money to do good, to be a blessing to other folks, to distribute to other people. To help other people, to go to their cash app and, 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 and let them know they are called to be God's bank. They should be rich in good works and should give happily to those in need, always being ready to share with others whatever God has given them. By doing this, they will be storing up real treasure for themselves in heaven. It is the only safe investment for eternity and they will be living a fruitful Christian life down here as well. Good great somebody. He's saying not only are you going to be laying up something in heaven, a treasure in heaven. He said, but you're going to be living a fruitful Christian life down here as well. You're prospering down here as well. You don't have to wait till you get on the other side. God has set up a way for you to have it here on this side too. Glory to God. And it's through you being a good steward, you being a person that God can trust with more, you being a person to understand that God, you are making me a place of rest that I may bring rest to other people. I'm telling you, my brothers and sisters, people's minds and everything else is snapping. They get confused. They're worried up. They're stressed out. But the church Shouldn't be. The body of Christ shouldn't be. Why? We got the word of God. We got the spiritual and God is bringing to us now, like never before, the natural. See, we have proven to God that God it ain't about the money. It ain't about the car. It ain't about the house. It's about you. 
We want you. We want to draw nigh to you so you can draw nigh to us. We love you more than a car, more than money, more than clothes. And once you start proving that to God, even the more. Now, God already knows anyway, but yet God wants us to make it visible and make it known to others who got their trust in it. See, other people got their trust in it. Your trust ain't in it. And so God blesses you with it and your trust ain't in it. So you at peace. You're not worried about it. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I remember the other day, glory to God, the man was talking to me about uh, some tires. He came out, he said, he said, Mr. Sharp, I took my car there. I was he won't ride him right. He, he, he said, uh, Mr. Sharp, I knew it was about time for my wife and I to get out of tires changed. And uh, he said, Mr. Sharp, I want you to come out here. Amen. On, on the hemming, not on the rogue. Amen. But on the hemming. And uh, he said, he said, see that? He said, your wires and stuff on the tires and everything. I said, okay. Amen. Then he told me a price, several hundred dollars, what it would cost. Amen. And I talked to uh, some other people that know about cars and everything, making sure that price was good and making sure that price was all right. Amen. Now, I know he's thinking, Mr. Sharp, I'm, I know this is going to worry you, this is going to stress you out. It didn't move me a bit because God had already deposited into our lives, my wife and I. So it was no big deal. Amen. Because we know how to budget and we know how to save. And that's what we're going to be teaching you about next week. Next week, we're going to get on this thing and show you even more how to be a treasury of God's glorious rest through budgeting your finances right, through handling this money right, because this is the year of covenant. And God wants to show you his covenant as it relates to your finances. All right, now watch this now. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Now, all right, let's go to this in, uh, I want to read this to them in the, in the CEV. 1 Timothy 6, 17 through 19 in the CEV. In the CEV. It says, warn the rich people of this world not to be proud or to trust in wealth that is easily lost. Tell them to have faith in God. Where's our faith? Not in our money. Our faith is where? In God. Who was Joseph trusting? God. Nothing disturbed Joseph. Study Joseph's life. Nothing worried that guy. Nothing moved that guy. Look at Jesus. When Jesus walked this earth, he was a treasury. When they needed money to pay their taxes, Jesus didn't freak all out. Oh, my God, where where money going to come from to pay y'all taxes? No, no. He said, go look in the fish mouth. He was walking in the supernatural, spiritual things and natural things. Look what he said. He says in this Bible, tell them to have faith in God who is rich. Our God ain't broke. Our God ain't poor. Our God is rich. See, listen at me. God is rich and blesses us with everything we need to enjoy life. Instruct them to do as many good deeds as they can to help everyone. Remind the rich to be generous and share what they have. This will lay a solid foundation for the future so that they will know what true life is like. Hallelujah. Because I'm telling you, my brothers and sisters, real, real life comes out of giving. Real, real life comes out of sowing. Real, real life comes out of helping others. Real, real life comes out of blessing others. When you bless somebody, when you sow a seed into somebody's life, you are blessing them. And that brings life to you and then it opens doors for you and favor for you and it keeps stuff coming. You cannot, you cannot, let me say it again, you cannot stay broke when you a giver. You cannot, you will not stay broke if you got a giving heart. If you're generous, you will always have something. Because God going to make sure it gets to you because he's making you a treasury of his glorious rest. All right. Now, let me read this to you in the uh, glory to God. The ERV, the ERV, the ERV, 
And then I'm going to read the Philippians and we'll be out of time for the night. Thank you for letting me go a little bit extra. I only plan on going 30 minutes. But I told you, the word of God fills me up and that's spiritual. And I want to fill you up, make you a treasury of his word, but also a treasury. God's getting ready to make you a treasury of his glorious rest. He's getting ready to bless you financially in 2024 because he made a covenant with Abraham. He made a covenant with Isaac and Jacob, all the seed of Abraham. And we are Abraham's seed today. And he is not going to lie to us. All right. First Timothy 6, 17 through 19 in the ERV. That's the easy read version. The sixth chapter of first Timothy, the 17th verse, verse 19, 17 through 19 ERV. Give this command to those who are rich, with the things of this world, tell them not to be proud, tell them to hope in God, not their money. So where's our hope in God? Why? Because no matter what God does for Pastor Reese and I, we still going to the house of God, still going to give God praise, still going to keep tithing, still going to keep saying God is a good God, still going to be pointing people to trust God. Hallelujah. Money cannot be trusted, but God takes care of us richly. He gives us everything to enjoy. He wants you to enjoy. He wants to give you some stuff to enjoy. He don't want to give you a car and then have you worry about how to make the payments. That ain't no enjoyable car. That Your car is enjoyable because you understand that God, you're going to help me to pay for this car. You bless me with it. It's not going to be a strain, not going to be a struggle. You're going to bless me to be able to pay it off. That's what he wants to do. So you can enjoy it. Hallelujah. I enjoy my Hemi because why? Pay for it. I did put some new tires on it. <laughs> Kept right on rolling. Tell those who are rich to do good, to be rich in good works. Tell them they should be happy to get. Oh, my. Look at that. Oh, I know that Bible didn't say that. Listen at 1 Timothy 6, <laughs> verse 18 in the ERV. Tell those, this is verse 18 now, tell those who are rich to do good. Tell those who are rich to do good, to be rich in good works. Tell them they should be happy. Oh, there it is. Tell them they should be happy to give. <laughs> Excuse me. Happy to give and ready to share. By doing this, they will be saving up a treasure for themselves. See, when you give, you save up a treasure for yourself. You become that treasure of God's glorious rest. This is 1 Timothy 16. Now we're at verse 19. By doing this, they will be saving up a treasure for themselves. And that treasure will be a strong foundation on which their future life will be built they will be able to have the life that is true life. God saying, do you not know what you're doing to help other people now is send you up a blessed future? If you want your future to be blessed, you better get actively involved in giving. Get actively involved in sowing. Actively involved so God can speak to you and use you to bless somebody when he did or when he does. See, I was actively involved. When God tells me to give something to somebody, I meet, I don't, I look, I do it. Boom. Amen. And so when God told me, look, give it to this person right there too. I obey. Bang. Now listen at me. God then sets me up to be a greater blessing. So he got to give more to me so I can give more to other people. Hallelujah. And we do all the time. My wife and I are always giving, always giving. And that's how you always have. If you always give, you will always have. Did you hear what I just said? If you always give, you will always have. God loveth a cheerful, hilarious, prompt to do it giver. He will never abandon them. He will never do without one. He's looking for one. He wants one. He's trying to find somebody who he can trust, who he can trust with what he owns. 
Joseph was trustworthy. All right. Now, let me go to Philippians three and I'm finishing it out now. This Philippians three verses 12 through 16 in the message Bible. This is the last verses right here. And then we'll stop right here. He said, I'm not saying that I have it have this all together, that I have it made, but I am well on my way reaching out for Christ who has so wondrously reached out for me. Friends, don't get me wrong. By no means do I count myself an expert in all of this, but I've got my eye on the goal where God is beckoning us onward to Jesus. God's telling us, come on, draw nigh to Jesus. I'm off and running. I'm not turning back. Look at verse verses 15 and 16. So let's keep focus on that goal. Those of us who want everything God has for us. See, I, I want to preach to people who want everything God has for them. I don't want to preach to people and teach to people who don't want everything that God has for them. Some people just satisfied in trying to be spiritual. They're always walking around trying to speak in tongues. Always walk around to my, always to my hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. They, they just satisfy and watch them. Usually they off. Usually they off course with life. They really off course with life because they don't understand that you are a spirit, but you have a soul and you live in a body and your body needs food. Your body needs clothing. Your body needs to be able, the natural world needs to be able to take care of with finances. So they don't get everything God has for them. And then what they end up being is a scorner. And the Bible said, reprove not a scorner lest he hate thee. Hallelujah. In fact, the Bible tells you to not even speak to the ear of a fool. Don't even speak to the ear of a fool. That's why those of you who watch us on Thursday night, I know you are some of the smartest. You're some of the most ingenious people. You're some of the most creative people. You got creative minds. You got creative ideas because God put this program called Sharp Points in your face because of your creativity, because of your insights because of your hunger because you want more hallelujah because sharp points is not a program for those who want to stay ignorant it's for those who want to grow who want to reach higher who got goals who got dreams so that they can bless other people look at what he said so let's keep focus on that goal those of us those of us, not everybody's like that, but those of us who want everything God has for us. If any of you have something else in mind, something less than total commitment, God will clear your blurred vision. You'll see it yet. Now that we're on the right track, now that we're on the right track, let's stay on it. Let's stay on this track, y'all. We're on the right track. God is telling us this year, 2024, a year in which we're going to make progress because of the covenant that he made with Abraham. Glory to God. The covenant that Jesus made possible for us to make our own. That in blessings, God will bless us. In multiplying, God will multiply us. God made Abraham rich. God blessed Isaac. God blessed Jacob. God blessed David. God is going to bless you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's a covenant keeping God and he wants you to have everything that he has ordained for your life. Now, hallelujah. Hallelujah. In other words, the more you learn, the more you should want to learn and the more you know, here's a key, here's a key. The more you learn, the more you ought to want to learn, but here's a key. Don't you miss this latter half I'm getting ready to say now. The more you know, the more you discover that you don't 
No. That's what keeps you hungry. Because the more you start knowing, you say, oh, my God, I didn't know all that. It's a learning. Every day you should be learning something new. Every day you should be learning something new. I learn something new every day. Every day I make it my goal to look in the word of God, to look at and see something. And it's like God opened my eyes up to something I didn't know. Or I pick up a book somewhere from somebody and read something and learn something because I'm telling you, Life demands that we learn and grow and advance and we're going to make progress because of the covenant. God's going to prove to you that you are ordained of God to be his bank. <laughs> I say you ordained of God to be his bank. Your life, your phone, your phone ain't just for gossip. Your phone ain't just for gossip. Your phone is so that you can get the right connection with the right people. So that, hey, your phone becomes a cash register. Hallelujah. Folks going to send you something on your phone. Notice when you talk to people now, when their birthday comes up, people say what? Give me your cash app. What are they saying? You become that bank. Well, before they had to go down there to PNC somewhere. Before they had to go down there to uh, 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 Truist Bank or Southern Bank or, or, or Wells Fargo or, or the credit union. But now they just said, what? Give me your cash app. Glory to God. My wife and I were coming out of a uh, Red Lobster one day. Amen. And my brother were with me. And, uh, and, and uh, we were there eating. And I said to the person, another uh, man of God was coming in. And I said, bless you, man of God. He, I, said, I said, he said, what y'all doing up here? I said, well, the day is my birthday. That was in September. And he said, oh, my God, man. He said, man, I, I hate I missed it. I said, well, it ain't too late. He said, give me your cash out. Just that quick. Give me your cash out. Boom. A bank, a phone. Where my phone at? Where my phone at? Where my phone at? That's right. This, this thing right here, this powerful thing. It's so, think about it. People now use their phone to watch movies. They use their phone to play games on it. They use their phone, the phone. To get, yeah, Zoom call. This, look at this powerful technology. What is God trying to say? I'm your God. And where man has been trying to cheat you, rob you, steal from you if you put your trust in me I'll make you the bank I'll bless you with money that you don't have to pay interest on you won't have to get a loan and pay all that interest money back you won't have to get a loan and have to be worried about all that think of it when a person go get a loan that's a whole lot of money the first years of them paying it's going towards interest. I ain't even knocking down the payment. It's just going towards interest. You know that's wicked. You know that's evil. You know God got a better system than that. But we got to get people and train people to trust God. Get your trust out of your money and put your trust in God so you can sow where he tells you to sow and bless those who he tells you to bless and be a person that would tithe and would give offering. Don't let people cheat you out of that and tell that lie to you that you don't have to tithe, you don't have to give offering. That's, this is God's way of protecting us. This is God's way of giving us houses we didn't build and wells we didn't dig. Hallelujah. I know the house that my wife and I are living in. We, we're living in it because of our trust in God and because we are tithers and we are offering givers. He can do stuff for you supernaturally that only he can do. Shout out to my man, Curtis Bryant. I got to quit here tonight. Amen. A man that's a giver. Hallelujah. That's right. Curtis Bryant, good to know you're watching, man. Man, you are God's bank. I said, you are God's bank. You got to see it. Come on, type that in. Did I tell them to type that in yet? You are God's bank. Come on, type it in. I am God's bank. I am God's bank. The devil don't want you to say that. I am God's bank. God going to use me to be a treasury, a treasury of the rest. I'm going to rest in God, not going to be troubled about anything, especially not money. 
A lot of people work. Number one, some of the people number one worry is money. Some people number one thing that got them down and out is money. The number one thing that got them all in stress and up in arms and I mean up in the you know just worried is finances. But they don't do stuff God's way. And God's saying, wait a minute, Joseph, I trusted him. That king, Pharaoh, who is a shadow and picture of God Almighty, and Joseph is a shadow and picture of Jesus. Everything was committed to that guy's hand. He took off his ring, put it on Joseph's finger. In other words, you got all my authority. And then he took off the vestas, put Joseph on goodly vestas. Now notice that versus how they treated Jesus over there in uh, the gospel. They stripped him. They were mocking him as king. But here in Genesis, they're honoring Joseph because believe it or not, no matter what, Jesus is the king of kings. He is the Lord of lords. Hallelujah. And he wants you to know that he wants you to have his authority and he wants you to walk in royalty. Did you hear what I just said? He wants you to walk in his authority and he wants you to walk royal, walk like royalty, live like royalty. Royal people don't worry about what they're going to eat, what they're going to wear, what they're going to put on. We're to walk in the royalty of God to trust him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So whenever you start picking up your phone, y'all be picking it up like this is my bank right here. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And money coming into it so you can even the more do what needs to be done. Shout out to Ricky Pender. Yeah, you're God's bank, man. You're God's bank. Hallelujah. And Mother Tillery, you're God's bank. Mother Doris, you're God's bank. Prophetess Fleming, you're God's bank. Sister Marilyn, you're God's bank. Sister Jean, you're God's bank. Sister Elizabeth, you're God's bank. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Elder White, you're God's bank, man. Hallelujah. You got a birthday coming up. That's right. Expect it. Expect it. Expect it. All right. Danny Bachelor, you're God's bank. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Donna Bynum. Brother Bynum, you're God's bank. You're God's bank. Cynthia Wilkins, you're God's bank. Minnie Bullock, you're God's bank. Yes, you are. Linda Walston. You're God's bank. You are God's bank. You are a cash register. God's getting ready to load it on you, pile it on you, and it won't be something you got to give man credit for. You're going to be thanking God, dancing, giving him a clap, giving him a shout, giving him the glory, giving him the praise, because Katie Bellamy, you are God's bank. That's right, Katie Bellamy. Joyce Johnson, you are God's bank. Gloria Knight, you are God's bank. Hallelujah. Rachel Moses, you are God's bank. That's right, Sister Rachel. You are God's bank. In the name of the Lord. Brianna, you are God's bank. Yes, you are. Hallelujah. Brother Brandon, you are God's bank. Sister Demetrius, you are God's bank. Brother Wade, you are God's bank. Elder Sheila and Minister Arthur Hayes, you are God's bank. Sister Shante White, you are God's bank. Eloise, you're God's bank. Sister Sabrina Williams, you're God's bank. Sister Linda Brinson, you are God's bank. You always giving. You know you God's bank, girl. Come on here. Let's shout about it. Let's praise God. We're God's bank. We are. We are the treasury. He's look, look, look. Oh, ta ta da ba ba. The word Joseph means to add. Look it up. It means to add. God use this man and he called Joseph, not Joseph, but he called him the treasury of thy glorious rest. Zeph not Pania. That's what he called him. Hallelujah. It's in your Bible. It ain't something I'm making up. It's in your Bible. Bishop Wayne Sharp, you're God's bank. Pastor Marjorie, you're God's bank. Pastor Susan Sharp, you're God's bank. Pastor Risa Nesta Sharp, Risa Nesta Sharp, you're God's bank. Sister Risa Johnson, you are God's bank. Marilyn Smith, you're God's bank. Rita, you are, Sister Rita, you are God's bank. Brother Kenwood Aline, 
You are God's bank. Hallelujah. How, Tasha Aline, you are God's bank. Glenn Glenn, Sister Wanda Brown, you are God's bank. We are God's bank. That's who we are. Hallelujah. And his bank is not going to be empty. His bank is going to be full. His bank is going to be loaded. His bank is going to have more than enough to supply and bless other people. Sister Anita Scott, you're God's bank. Yes, sir. Elder Ricky Scott, you're God's bank. All of you people of God, we are God's bank. Hallelujah. I praise God for this message tonight. I got excited, went over. Amen. My wife just wanted me to keep going with it because I'm telling you what, next week we're going to get into some aspects of this thing. We're going to show you even the more how to be that person that God can trust through the budgeting process. God's going to use us in these last days. Shout out to all of you who tune in tonight. Amen. We thank God for you. We're excited about 2024 and what it's bringing to your life. If you tune in late, go back, view it, check it out. Amen. Check out part one. Check out part two. And this is part three of this word. And let it be a blessing to your life. These message messages, again, can be viewed on Facebook and or on YouTube. Hallelujah. And it can be a blessing to your life. It can be a blessing to your life. Hallelujah. If you desire to be saved, my God, you better have, come on and get saved in 2024. This, this part two. I'm sorry. Yeah, this is part two, ain't it? Yeah, I'm sorry. I said part three. I'm sorry. Part one. And this is part two of the message. Thank you, Pastor Reese. I get excited. Hey, Amen. You ought to see us sometimes trying to keep me calm down because I get too excited because the word of God is life. The interest of thy word, it giveth light. And it gives understanding to the simple. And I thank God. Amen. That that when I get too excited, she helps me calm down. Amen. Because I'm telling you, that word, it stirs me. It's like fire. Elder Bobby Gaston, you are God's bank. Amen. And your wife, Sister Vanessa Gaston, you are God's bank. Sister Patricia Burton. That's right. Sister Patricia Burton, you are God's bank. Oh, my God. Hallelujah. Brother Burden, you're God's bank. My sister in the natural as well as in the spiritual. Sister Gloria Lachelle Boyd, you are God's bank in the name of the Lord. Sister Applewhite, you are God's bank. Sister Iris White, you are God's bank. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Brother Yes, you are God's bank. I'm just I'm just feeling this for all the saints. And if I miss your name tonight, it ain't intentionally. Amen. You say it for yourself. You are God's bank. Hallelujah. In the name of the Lord. All right. Listen, if you're not saved, you desire to be saved. Give us a call at 252-563-5382. 252-563-5382. After this broadcast goes off, we would love to pray with you. I'm telling you, this is praying time. Salvation is coming to people's houses. People are getting ready to get saved, get filled with the Holy Ghost, get baptized. There's an out, there's an outpouring of God's spirit taking place. I'm telling you, I've never seen anything like what I'm seeing right now in which I'm asking people and they just responding quickly and immediately to the to the word of God, to the things of God. God got some hearts and some minds. Yeah, there's some people that are stubborn and, and fools. You don't speak in their ears, but there's some people that's open. And tonight, many of you are open and you're going to receive from God. Because you're open to hear the word of the Lord. Brother Vincent Bellamy, you are God's bank. Amen. In the name of the Lord. Listen at this. Oh, Amen. Pastor Who is that? Willie Pastor Willie Mae Bryan. You are, you, you are God's bank, woman of God. You are God's bank. Amen. Receive it in Jesus' name. Expect that phone to go off with cash app and all this stuff. And if you don't have it, you better go on and get it because you are God's bank. They got to make a deposit in your life. And people going to want to do it. People going to need to do it. And God's going to touch their heart to do it in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. All right. Now, listen, we're here every Tuesday night on this platform, every Tuesday night at 730 and every Thursday, this platform here on Facebook, every Tuesday night at 730 Bible study night. Every Thursday we come on at seven o'clock. Now, I was supposed to have been off in 30 minutes, but. The Holy Ghost had us going like this because he's trying to make a deposit 
of his word to you every Thursday at seven o'clock. And listen, every Sunday, every Sunday morning, we're back in the building having a glorious time and not only having a glorious time, believing God to save, believing God to set the captive free, believing God to pull somebody out of what we once was we once were in. We were into some foolishness like they are in now. But God saved us. And if he saved us, he can save them. At 10 a.m., we're right there at 936 Amal Avenue. At 1030, we come on Facebook and YouTube simultaneously. You can watch us. And if you 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 if you, you at your local church and y'all have service, don't forget you can always go back later and watch the program on these platforms, Facebook or YouTube. Go back and check them out. I'm telling you, we are talking about this thing on covenant because by the mouth of two or three witnesses shall every word be established. The book of Corinthians tells us that. The book of Deuteronomy tells us that. And we believe the word of God. Now, listen, there are several ways you can be a blessing to our local church. Here's how you can be a blessing to our local church. You can send a check or money order to our local church. That called newness of life Christian center. It's a donation or a tithe. If you're not a, per, a person that's a part of a local church yet and uh, you want to tithe somewhere, tithe, amen. A tithe means a tenth. Give that tenth to newness of life Christian center PO box 1462 Tarboro, North Carolina. The zip code is 27886. Newness of Life Christian Center, P.O. Box 1462, Tarboro, North Carolina, zip code 27886. That's right. Amen. Deacon Dennis Battle, you are God's bank. Sister Vernita Battle, you are God's bank. That's right. You are God's bank. <laughs> download the Vanco mobile app. And another way you can do it is download the Vanco mobile app and type in Newness of Life Christian Center. That's right. And the church will pop up and you can sow a seed that way. That's how you give to the local church. Now, if you would like to bless Pastor Reese and I personally, we are God's bank. And here's what you do. Go to your cash app. Hit your dollar sign. Type in R-E-V-S-H-A-R-P-E. All right. You can do that. Amen. And again, once you know that's your gift to us and we appreciate those of you who do that and bless us. Thank you so much. Listen. This upcoming Sunday, we'll be celebrating 40 years of marriage. And some of you, you want to bless Pastor Reese and I. Amen. You can do that by going to your cash app. Hit the dollar sign. R-E-V-S-H-A-R-P-E. Believe me, we are blessed. And believe me, we want you to do it hilariously. This is never forced. We never force anybody at Newness of Life to give anything or anybody. I wrote a book called Riding the Back of a Soul. And that book teaches us how to sow willingly, and how to sow joyfully, because that's the only way God accepts it. And that's the only way you can get back a proper return. Amen. Is by giving willingly, is by sowing joyfully, by doing it from the heart. Amen. And people ask us all the time, look, why don't you put your uh, cash out? Out because I want to be a blessing to you. So since people ask us, in fact, they even say, make sure, Bishop Sharp, when you get up there, that you say dollar sign R E V S H A R P E. Put the E up there because I tried to give you, send you something, and I didn't put the E up there. You got to put the E up there. My last name has an E on it. Amen. Be a blessing to me. Be a blessing to that great woman of God, Pastor Willie May. She's a great woman of God as well. There are great people all over the world, and I thank God for good people. All right. Now, listen, if you don't have cash out, but you want to bless Pastor Reese and I, if you want to be a blessing to us. Then again, use the address of the church. But the only difference is you're going to write that check or money order to Van Sharp. The address is P.O. Box 1462 Tarboro, North Carolina, zip code 27886. Excuse me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Say what it's for. If it's for anniversary, say happy anniversary. Or if it's just for pastor, I'm enjoying the word. Say that as well. Amen. Hmm? I'm sorry. Our wedding anniversary. I'm sorry. Our wedding anniversary. All right. All right. Amen. That's right. February the 4th. All right. Uh, Before we close tonight, we want you that know how to pray to be praying for 
the Harrow family, uh, a good friend of mine that I went to school with. Amen. He was a little bit older than me, but he was a great, great guy, great, great friend. Deacon uh, Ray Raymond Harrell. Amen. He was a good, good friend of mine out of Raleigh, North Carolina. Amen. And he passed away Sunday and uh, be praying for his wife, Winnie, a wonderful woman of God. And he was a great man of God. We, he used to text me almost every Tuesday because he was praying for teachers. Excuse me. And he also served as a fireman. Amen. He was with them for about 30 years and uh, just a tremendous man of God, got saved, got filled with the Holy Ghost. He was a part of a good local church there in Raleigh. His pastor had been on, had gone on to be with the Lord because I knew his pastor personally. We used to go on uh, prayer retreats with his pastor and with other pastors. We'd go on prayer retreats and fasting and all that kind of stuff. But uh, thank God for, amen, Deacon Raymond Harrell. Thank God for that man of God, amen, who was fighting a good fight, amen, and kept the faith. And now he's gone, amen, to be with the Lord. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord, like my mom. And I'm telling you, amen, people always say, well, why didn't you down that man? Listen, I know my mama was saved. I know my mama loved the Lord. And yes, she's missed here on earth. God knows I miss her. Would love to be able to pick that phone up now and tell her how much I love her, hear her voice. Amen. I go get me one of those nice, nice hugs or kisses on the forehead. She would always kiss me on my jaw. Or I would kiss her on her jaw or kiss her on the forehead. But I thank God, amen, that she was saved and she loved the Lord. And I'm just so grateful to God that I was able to lead my mother to the Lord. Amen. All right. All right. Yeah. And we're praying for our brother Vincent Bellamy. Amen. We're praying for you, sir. We love you. Amen. He called me the other morning. Amen. And had a nice little conversation with me. Amen. And we're praying for you, sir, that you be healed, that you be strengthened, that you be renewed in your body in the name of the Lord. Let's pray for him now. Father, in the name of Jesus, healing is the children's bread. It is that which we are privileged to partake. And so, Father, we thank you that because of the blood of Jesus and because of the name of Jesus and the authority in that name, we speak restoration, we speak renewed energy, we speak renewed vitality to the body of Brother Vincent Bellamy. We command total deliverance, total strength, total hope, healing. Come to that body now in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Not only him, but some of you that are watching by way of uh, this platform, I command healing to go to your body right now in your leg area, your hip area, your stomach area, your knee area, your head. Be healed. Be made whole from the crown of your head to the sole of your feet. In Jesus name. Amen and amen. Thank you for watching tonight. Appreciate you. Love you. You have a blessed, blessed weekend. Hope to see you Sunday morning at NOLCC, 936 Albemarle Avenue. Happy birthday, Elder Marvin White and all you February people. Amen. We're going to continually shout your birthdays out as we move forward. Amen. Don't forget the scripture that you need to be looking at at night before you go to bed and in the morning. Amen. It's Deuteronomy chapter 7. Verse nine. All right. God bless you. Oh, yeah. Don't forget, we got a leadership conference coming up. If you are a leader, if you want to know more about how to lead, we are having a leadership conference. Pastors are excited. In fact, they we didn't want, really want to do it, but they kept pushing us even last year. They were disappointed that we didn't do it. It's been a while since the pandemic came in and stuff. It threw some things off course. So we're only doing one day this year. Next year, we'll be doing uh, more days. But this year, we're only doing one day, which is Saturday morning. It's going to start March the 9th, 2024, beginning at 939. You need to be already in the place sitting down by 930 because you ever been to our leadership conference. You know, we start right at 930. Amen. And we'll be there teaching and then we take a lunch break then come back 
and do about one or two more teachings and then we let you go home. It's going to be powerful. You need to contact our office at 252-641-0098 to register because we do feed the people there with no charge. Amen. We just bless people. We, we want the leaders to come. We want nothing worried on your mind. We want you to just get blessed. Go back to your local church and strengthen the hands of your pastor, strengthen the hands of your apostle, prophet, evangelist, teacher. We want the local church to be strong because that's the place of refuge for many people in our community. We'll be letting you more and more about it. Give us a call at 252-641-0098. 252-641-0098. Leave your information. Let me know how many elders you got, deacons you got, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers that are coming. We want to serve you. Until then, next time, you be blessed. Have a blessed night. <laughs>